Welcome at Practical Philosophy for the third video about economic growth and happiness. Last time we saw that adaptation, relative wealth and side effects like job insecurity explain why growth doesn't create happiness. Today instead it's all about the impacts of the Easterlin paradox. So what can we take from this? What is actually making us happy? Is money practically useless? Actually not quite. Studies have shown that money can make you happy if you give it away. Seriously, helping and spending money on other people seems to boost happiness. Apart from that, good stable relationships, friends, family and spouses are super beneficial to happiness. And of course some daily routines like a healthy diet, regular exercise and meditation slash mindfulness may boost happiness as well. However, because of adaptation, consumption is no reliable source of happiness. There you have it, it is really not rocket science. Those are things that Asian philosophers like Epicurus knew already. Epicurus by the way recommended to stay away from luxuries and concentrate on nice people which he invited to his wonderful garden. Hmm, that was on a personal level, but what should nations actually do if they want to increase the happiness of their citizens? Instead of economic growth, should nations invest more in culture, in environmental protection, like clean air and water, or, or maybe some measures to facilitate community building? Well, there's still one or two interesting things. Let's look at a list with the least happy and most happy countries in 2017. On the right side you see countries like Syria, Yemen and South Sudan. Three countries with civil wars. And also the other countries are not really stable to put it mildly. Thus we can conclude that war and violence are not good for happiness. Wow, who could have guessed that? Well, I promise you, the next insight is less obvious. Look at the four most happy countries. Finland, Denmark, Iceland and Norway. What about them could make people happy? Hmm, they have all pretty bad weather and darkness half of the year? Probably not. I give you a hint. Actually, there's even a book written about this by a guy called Benjamin Radcliffe. Mr. Radcliffe compared nations with varying degrees of state interventions. So on the one side were states with minimal taxes and public services emphasizing market liberalism. Those could be the US or Great Britain. In the middle were welfare states like Germany and at the far end were ultra welfare states like those four Nordic countries we saw on the list. Those countries have high taxes but offer a wide range of public services including education, healthcare and social transfers to support the poor. So now you can guess what Radcliffe discovered. Yeah, the book emphasizes that ultra welfare states like Norway, Denmark, Finland and Iceland are the happiest. The bigger the state, the more well-being. Apparently better social security, nicer public spaces, a lower crime rate, improved education and enhanced equality more than compensate for the lower income. There you have it, not only is GDP pretty much useless, but so is economic freedom to some degree. At least if happiness is what we ultimately care about. So in summary, the Easterlin paradox together with the other happiness research is a real challenge for every neoliberal economist. Or what do you think? Are you a fan of economic growth? Is happiness the main thing? Or just a side dish? And of course, will you move to Finland now? I'm excited to read your comments. Apart from that, likes and subscriptions do make me really happy. Although I might adapt to that in the long run. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed and I do hope to see you again. Have a nice day and goodbye.